The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 302 in the name of Graham Day on promoting good food from Angus. I'm presuming that's the place Angus rather than the person. <laughs> this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press their request to speak buttons as soon as possible? And I call on Graham Day to open the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Mr Day. Presiding officer, thank you. Uh, let me begin by thanking colleagues on the SNP Green and Labour benches for providing the support for this motion, which has enabled it to be debated this evening. Can I also, also thank those colleagues who have remained behind to support the debate? There was a time, not so long ago, that I might not have been able to stand up in this chamber and extol the virtues of a thriving, diverse, Angus-based food and drink sector. Back in 2011, as a new member of the Raki Committee, I attended the Royal Highland Show and dropped in on a fantastic event being hosted within the SRUC stand. In essence, it pitched areas of the country against each other in a food wars contest, allowing visitors to sample produce from each competing region, then vote for the best. Front and centre in this was the wonderful and sadly lamented Savour the Flavours initiative from Dumfries and Galloway. I recall returning from the show and dashing off a letter to our local council asking whether it could pull together such an offering and help promote it on behalf of Angus. I recall even more clearly the response I received to that. It was disappointing, to say the least. But times change. Angus has begun to develop a reputation for more than just the smoky, soft fruit, game and preserves production, hugely important that those are. Now, when people think of Angus, they're also thinking high-end market vodka and gin, as produced by Ogilvy Spirit in our Beaky Highland Estate distillery. And credit the Head of Economic Development at the Council, Alison Smith, and her team for helping facilitate the upsurge in interest in what the county has to offer. Given that response I received back in 2011, it's heartening nowadays to hear local food and drink businesses praising the Council for the support it's providing them. And alongside all of this, we have the emergence of the food life, a group of local Angus businesses which have come together uh, uh, to, as they say, put Angus on the map for its excellent food and drink and to make local produce available to residents and visitors alike. And if you in any way doubt the progress that's been made in this area, then look at the four nominations there were for the Rural Parliament's Innovators Award for Angus, established to mark the Rural Parliament coming to Brecon early next month. Three were food and drink related. Firstly, there was the aforementioned Ogilvy Spirits, an award-winning farm diversification project masterminded by Graham and Caroline Jarin, who are using homegrown potatoes to make vodka and the base spirit for gin, and have now branched out into cocktail mixes. Then we had Angus Farmers Market, which is held regularly in Forfar and Montrose. And finally, contending for the ward was Food Life, that collective of Angus-based fishermen, farmers, retailers, food vendors and primary producers. And of course, earlier this week, Food Life was announced as a winner, and a popular winner at that. I dropped in on one of their pop-up food events a few weeks ago and was amazed to see the turnout from far and wide to support it. The queues for the Artisana Patisserie Van, Muckle Bucket Oven Pizza, Sacred Grounds Coffee Beans, Kerry Ales and the previously noted Gin Bothy, for example, were heartening to say the least, especially considering the location of the gathering wasn't a well-populated Angus town, but the small coastal settlement of East Haven, a venue which required pretty much every visitor to have travelled a decent distance. There is no doubt that food life has struck on something. And equally, there's no doubt that the food and drink sector in general is thriving in Angus and gaining a national and indeed international reputation. Ogilvy Spirits in our Beaky Highland Estate distillery, which is also located within my Angus uh, South constituency, are at the forefront of that. Our Beaky has just won two gold medals at the Spirits Business First Luxury Masters, and now is branching out into whisky, as well as gin and vodka, including chili vodka. Its products are being sold to the USA, Hong Kong, China, mainland Europe and the Caribbean. Ogilvy Spirits has also won a raft of international awards and having focused initially on exporting to the rest of the UK, the company is now actively exploring branching out into the Japanese, Malaysian, US and Australasian markets. All told, food and drink, the food and drink sector in Angus is reckoned to provide employment for an excess of 1,800 people with a 2.5% increase showing between 2014 and 2015. And as these new elements prove their reliability and capability to supply on a scale, then so it is to be hoped that those who wish to and whose products are suited to are afforded the opportunity to bid for public sector contracts, because supporting local businesses and shortening food supply chains must be part and parcel of procurement. But, presiding officer, having done the parochial bit, 
Let me focus for a moment on Scotland's performance on food and drink. In 2014, Scotland's food and drink growth sector generated turnover of approximately £14.4 billion, up almost 3%. It generated growth value added of approximately £5.3 billion, up 5.2% from 2013. Food and drink manufacturing continues to account for a large share of the sector's turnover, 73% indeed, and the GBA 71%. Over the period 2008 to 2014, turnover growth in Scotland's food and drink manufacturing sector was at 21.4%, outperforming the UK, uh, which was at 13.3%. And this contrast is even more stark when you take Scotch whisky out of the equation. In both Scotland and the UK, the growth has been driven by increased turnover generated by the food manufacturing sector. Between 2008 and 2014, Scotland's food manufacturing sector turnover increased by 43% compared to an increase of 21% for the UK. In other words, the growth of food manufacturing in Scotland is running at twice the rate of the UK average. And the good news continues. Between 2008 and 2014, the level of R&D investment by Scottish food and drink companies doubled. Sales of Scottish brands within the UK have risen by around 35% since 2007. Exports of food beyond the UK have risen by over 50% since 2007, breaking the £1 billion barrier. A positive picture. Credit the producers, but credit also those who have played and are playing their part in promoting the sector. People like the former Cabinet Secretary Richard Lockhead and James Withers and his team at Scotland Food and Drink. Clearly, given the upward trajectory, we can of course do more. And in drawing to a conclusion, presiding officer, can I make the case that as part of, of this, the Scottish Government should seek to appoint a national chef as per its manifesto commitment? It strikes me that we are missing a trick in that regard. Our food has a global reputation. We have chefs of international standing. Attend any domestic food promotion event and you will inevitably see cookery displays. Let's appoint one of these top-notch chefs to a role promoting Scottish produce and the multitude of dishes it can deliver to an already receptive international audience. And talking of good food, presiding officer, can I finish with a plug for a Taste of Angus event that I'm hosting in the members' dining room immediately following this debate, which is going to afford members the opportunity to sample some of the very produce, the best produce that Angus has to offer, along with the aforementioned vodka and gin. Presiding officer. Thank you, Mr. Day. I look forward to my personal invitation. That sounds, sounds good. We now move to the open speeches um, of around four minutes, please. Um, Peter Chapman to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I refer members to my register of interests in agriculture. I'm sure colleagues across the chamber will join me in paying tribute to all those who have played a role in making the food life such an extraordinary success. I also note that they have won the Ru Rural Innovator Award from the Scottish Rural Parliament, and I look forward to the opportunity to meet their team when I, I attend the Rural Parliament in Brechin at the beginning of next month. Now, Angus is well known as a county that produces some of our finest food. From the Angus glens producing fine cattle and sheep to some of the most fertile soils in Scotland, growing malting barley, quality wheat, seed tatties, and delicious fruit and vegetables. And let's not forget our broad smokies and what a treat they are. And as Graham rightly pointed out, gin is now added to that list and there must be many others. And it is a testament to the unique combination of hard work, innovation and respect for tradition that makes our food production industry such an excellent field, if you'll forgive the pun especially when we enjoy such success in exporting our quality produce. And despite such excellent quality being grown in Angus, there are significant challenges for those who are producing these world-beating goods. Times are hard on Scotland's farms just now, and profits are difficult to find. I am delighted to support our food and drink sector, and over the past fortnight I was fortunate enough to talk with many of the companies who have made such a success of Scottish produce. £14.3 billion is the value of our food and drink produce, making it the largest manufacturing industry in Scotland, and an industry that is growing strongly, which is an incredible achievement by all those at Food and Drink Scotland and the supply chain that supports it. 
Of course, as this motion rightly points out, national organisations can't always drill down into the detail needed to promote the unique selling points of local areas and of specialist products. The Food Life will fulfil the role that Food and Drink Scotland does for the whole country, but within the fertile landscapes of Angus. And I would like to congratulate my colleague, colleague Graham Day for bringing this motion forward. We all need success stories like this. However, as most of us are, will be well aware, the billions of pounds that we have heard much about during Scotland's food and drink fortnight are not making their way back to farmers. We know that the food chain is not working well. Farmers are taking far too much risk and are putting in way too much effort for the meagre returns that they receive. This is obvious as farm profits have fallen every year for the past three years and Scottish farm debt is at a record high of 2.2 billion, up 9% or 177 million pounds on, on the year. And the only way we can continue with our success in food and drink is to ensure that as well as promoting quality produce, we need to look again at the whole supply chain. Too small a share of what the public spends on food flows back to the farmer. Presiding officer, the people who produce the raw material on which your successful food and drink industry is built must get a fair share of the cake if they are to survive and if they are to continue to produce some of the finest food in the world. Thank you. Rhoda Grant to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I also congratulate Graeme Day for securing uh, this debate, highlighting the importance of food and drink in Angus. And he pays tribute to the Food Life Group who are working together to promote Angus as a foodie destination. And as others have said, with the success of our growth smokies, they already have a head start. The protected status of the smoky inspired uh, my constituents and myself to seek similar protection for the Stornoway black pudding. And we had similar success as well. And it's important we uh, celebrate the excellent excellence of our produce, protect their name and reputation. I think that's very important that people within this parliament do that. In a subsequent motion, Graeme Day congratulates the Food Life Group on winning the Scottish Rural Parliament's Rural Innovator Awards Angus section. He also goes on to congratulate the other winners, including Buvarai, Co Cozy Homes East Sutherland Scheme, Slate Community Council, Dynamic Dancers and Sula Brookies, um, Inspiration by Autism, Ova Ferry, LDO, Rockfield Centre, Mullanayona Sustainable Transport and Mullanayona Food Trail, all of whom are located in the Highlands and Islands and therefore the Food Life Group are in very good company indeed. It's very good to see collectives achieving this kind of recognition. And the Food Life Group is very similar to Buvarai, which is a community-owned co-op run for, by and for small businesses in Barra and Battersea. And they provide local businesses with a shop to sell their produce, which none of them could actually do if, because they would be unable to sustain that on their own. And the success of this has meant that local people have access to local crafts and produce, something that they only had on an ad hoc basis if they knew the supplier before. Um, but there are challenges for such enterprise, and I know Buvarai has had difficulty in finding affordable premises of the size required by them. Their current shop is due to be demolished, and they're struggling to find an alternative. The location of the shop is really important, um, with an increase on, of cruise ships to the islands. They want to be close to the pier in the harbour to make the most of that. And some of the alternative locations are some distance away from the pier and the harbour, and while they would still be accessible to local people, they would not be so accessible to visitors who maybe wouldn't know where to look. I've met with the co-op members, the council and community councils, and I'll continue to work with them to find a solution, because it's really important they continue um, the success they have had, indeed growing some of those small businesses. Food poverty is a real issue as well in those areas due to the high costs of transporting food to the islands by ferry. And therefore, the ability to access high quality local food is not only good for the local businesses, but also good for the health of population. And we have some fantastic foods um, that are available and indeed for sale there locally. 
Um, Graham Day also mentioned in his speech gin, um, and it's a mark of the success of some of our local gins, and indeed Harris Gin, that Harris Gin ran out of bottles recently and had to ration stocks. Luckily, I have just heard that they now have more bottles in stock and the rationing has come to an end, and I think there is a um, delight all round because of that. It's really important that the Parliament recognises organisations that make these contributions to their communities, and I'm therefore happy to join in congratulating Food for Life Group on their innovation and their success. I call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Alex Johnson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And may I say how cool it is that Graham Day should bring uh, this subject to uh, Parliament today, because today is one of my two no food days in an attempt to uh, contain the ever expanding waistline, uh, which is uh, caused entirely by my love of food, uh, much of it uh, the good quality Scottish food. So um, I'm not necessarily pleased with my colleague uh, about this. Um, he, of course, uh, omitted one of the gems of his area. I'm really quite mystified by this, which I would enjoy and others would, which, of course, is the for Bridie, which I understand a protected uh, status. It's not you can... Oh, I beg your pardon. I have just had the whisper that it, it might be Angus, but it's not his constituency, so he may, he may be forgiven. Um, but uh, speaking of the, the smoky, I sort of thought to myself that we might pray for an Indian summer, we haven't put the barbecue away. And I see this smoky sitting in our barbecue wrapped in a piece of tin foil uh, with uh, some Graham's spreadable butter, which of course includes oilseed rape, uh, which is brought to the peak of culinary excellence uh, uh, by a farmer adjacent to Peterhead, and of course Scottish butter. Uh, but it would also have garlic uh, from Elgin, and I now know uh, that, of course, I'd be able to, while watching that and smelling that delicious food uh, from Angus cooking on the barbecue, I can now sip uh, gin uh, from an Angus uh, distillery. But even better, uh, we could get sloes from Dumfrieshire, which is the best place to get them, and make slow gin, which, whose sweetness would just absolutely augment that. So I'm, I'm beginning to slaver in anticipation of the uh, event that uh, takes place at six o'clock. I still have 350 calories I'm allowed to eat today. Uh, so I hope to join uh, Graham Day. But I, I, I will say, notwithstanding the excellent food that there is from Angus, I do think we're missing the creme de la creme of food, uh, which I have a secret deal and I'm going to reveal for the very first time, um, not at the most recent election, but the one before that, my conservative opponent was a fisherman called Michael Watt, who I get on with extremely well, very nice uh, chap. He, he supplies me with cod roll, and there is nothing on earth that I love more than cod roll. Um, I, I have to say, of course, that we're going to have to move it up the food chain as well, and I think the new name for cod roll is Scottish White Caviar. And I look forward to seeing it marketed as that uh, in, in future. But in all seriousness, uh, presiding officer, um, the Scottish Government, with the support of people across the chamber, uh, promotes the good food nation policy. Uh, because what we eat determines our health, determines our girth, uh, determines uh, much of our economy. Uh, Peter Chapman correctly referred to the economic value of good quality food. We're not going to compete with the rest of the world on price where food's concerned. That's very unlikely. There's very few things uh, we can compete on price. But we will always be able to compete on quality. And I'm delighted to find that Angus is stepping up to the mark, uh, seeking to meet and perhaps even overtake in some distant uh, uh, point in, in time uh, the quality of the food that we have been producing for many years in the northeast of Scotland. Uh, so I congratulate the food producers uh, of Angus on their efforts. I look forward uh, to tasting more of them in future. And of course, it's not just farmers. I also look forward to the ripening brambles I see in my hedgerows as part of the natural foraging that provides such excellent food from Scotland's nature bounty we can all enjoy. Presiding officer. 
Uh, the last of the open spe speeches is Alex Johnson. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be able to congratulate Graham Day on having brought this motion before Parliament and to join him in, uh, in welcoming the establishment of the Food Life in Angus, uh, promoting good food from Angus. The farming industry in Scotland is one that is at the cutting edge of development and has been for mo most of the, its time here. It's important to remember that we are an industry that is capable of producing both on the large and on the small scale. And that what we have achieved in recent years in particular is a skill in the production, processing and marketing of food products, which has made us still further a world leader. It's that innovation that has allowed us to continue to express ourselves in the production of food, both on a large and on a small scale. And nowhere focuses that more uh, accurately than what goes on in Angus, where the very large and the very small exist side by side and equally successful. I think I have to say a few words about Stuart Stevenson and his uh, continuing complaints about uh, girth. It's something that we need to learn to tolerate, Stuart. And I can assure everyone that I am not having a no food day. So <laughs> I will, uh, oh, oh, indeed. Yeah. Stuart um, Stevenson. May I, through the chair, remind the member that I have done a deal with the member's wife to keep an eye on his waistline because while I continue to oppose him politically, I value him as a person and a contributor to the human race. I thank Be the gracious, Mr Johnson. <laughs> I, I thank the member for his concern. He did mention, however, uh, his habit of putting smokies on the barbecue. Now, some may like that sort of thing, but I have to say that you've never tasted a smoky until you've tasted it right off the fire. Because only then, when it's hot, newly cooked, and still has the fresh taste of the smoke about it, will you understand the significance uh, of the smoky in its natural environment. However, Angus has demonstrated a great deal of ingenuity in food production over the years. And if you look at the soft fruit industry that now exists there and in surrounding counties, you will see an industry that was once uh, simply producing fruit in a season, uh, often always all ripening on the same day, to one that now has extended its growing season massively over the period of the summer from spring to autumn and has become a vital part uh, of our economy. It has to be said, however, that that vital part of the economy is very dependent on labour who come in from other countries. And it's one of the things that I will be seeking to work with farmers in the Angus and surrounding areas to ensure that that supply of labour is not interrupted by any changes that are afoot. It also has to be said that Angus is uh, a great producer of staples. Potatoes, including seed potatoes and grain production, are large-scale operations within the county. And many of the larger farmers demonstrate extremely high levels of efficiency. It's also a county in which fewer livestock exist now than did at times in the past. But nevertheless, the quality remains extremely high. And for Fermat is one of the main focuses in the area for trading that livestock. Yes, it is the case that we in Scotland are good at producing food, we're good at processing it, and we're good at selling it. The opportunity is there to give Scotland's food production industry its head. Given the right level of support, it is the people who are involved in that industry themselves who will take it forward and show that ingenious ability to make profit from food production. And that's why I would always encourage the Minister to give support where he can, but to have faith in the ability of the people in our farming and food producing communities. I now call Fergus Ewing to close the debate. Around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Well, thank you, Presiding Officer. This has been an excellent debate this evening, uh, ably led by, by Graham Day, who uh, made excellent tribute of all the food producers from his constituency in Angus. Uh, and he uh, provided us with a, a comprehensive catalogue of mouth-watering 
temptations. Uh, and indeed, the list of, uh, of food and drink and successful produce and businesses, the list from his constituency of Angus was so long, it was so tantalizing that I thought it was less of a speech and more of an a la carte menu. And why not? Angus a la carte has a certain ring to it, does it not? Uh, and I think the, the breadth, depth, variety of food and drink produced by people, by businesses, by farmers in Angus is quite remarkable and a great tribute to them and to the success of food and drink in Scotland. I thought it was slightly churlish of him to spurn the inclusion of the four for Bridie in, in, uh, in his chosen uh, producers and foods. And I've heard of occasions of jilting the bride, but this must be the first ever occasion of jilting the bridie, presiding officer. Yes, you, you saw that one coming, didn't you? Um, and uh, Stuart Stevenson it was who, who mentioned slavering. I think we're going to have to consider the, the uh, procedures committee to review standing orders to prohibit references to slavering in future to ensure decorum and good conduct in this chamber. Um, but to be serious, the, the growth of food and drink, as was remarked upon by Mr. Day himself in his speech and by others across the chamber, has been quite remarkable. And I think it is right, as members have done, to pay tribute to all of those involved. And I think not least the farmers, because we talk about food and drink Scotland, and that doesn't mention farms or farmers. That's not in the phrase. But of course, the farmers and crofters are the people who are actually producing the food. And therefore, I think it's perhaps an omission that I did resolve to put right and will continue so to do. And the, the quality, I think, of the food and drink produced in Scotland from our natural larder is at the key of the success that we have seen. And I do recognize, as has been said already, the leadership of my predecessor, Richard Lockhead, who, uh, and indeed James Withers for the work they have done and which I'm proud to endeavor to um, continue. Uh, and uh, I think that we have in the, the Scottish Government been able over recent times to provide some practical assistance. For example, since 2008, 18 awards of Food Processing Marketing Corporation FPMC awards grants have been made, 18 to businesses in Angus alone, totaling 23.3 million pounds. That's just in Angus. Uh, and I think uh, that does show that there has been a solid, continuous contribution from the Scottish Government, one I hope we can continue. We've seen a number of successful initiatives, and some of them have been mentioned. Think Local, a programme over the past few years, has supported uh, many initiatives uh, to promote food, such as food from Argyle. Connect Local uh, is a service delivered through a £3 million government investment which will support local food and drink producers individually and collectively. The plans to establish a national chef have been alluded to and we will of course bring forward plans in a due course and that will further, I think, focus attention on that. And the Good Food Nation uh, is an aspiration that I think will be shared by us all and has many strands to it so that it will become the norm for people in this country to take a keen interest in their food. So that people who serve and sell food from schools to hospitals, retailers, cafes and restaurants are committed to serving and selling good food. That everyone in Scotland has ready access to healthy, nutritious food they need, especially children from disadvantaged circumstances. And food such as fresh salmon from our excellent farm salmon. It's uh, one of Scotland's success stories, as I was saying, when opening Aquaculture Europe in the EICC last evening. And venison, an underrated, but nonetheless, most nutritious of all meat, I understand, where perhaps there's, uh, there's even more possibilities. The Scottish Food Commission was established by the Scottish Government in the wake of the Good Food Nation discussion, uh, and is chaired by the estimable Shirley Spears of Three Chimneys fame, uh, and we are, I think, together, across party, working to promote the continuing success of uh, Scotland's food and drink. Rhoda Grant mentioned the uh, Harris Distillery, which I had the pleasure of visiting whilst on holiday this year and partaking of some of the, the produce. 
and I recommend it, uh, and all the other new distilleries, gin and whiskey throughout the country to all. Another success story of recent years. I don't know whether it is an apocryphal or a true story that on the formal night of the formal opening of the Harris Distillery, which of course is producing excellent gin, they consumed every drop of the product they had distilled to that date. I don't know whether that's true. If it's not, then it could possibly be defamatory if interpreted in, in a negative way, which of course I, I would not wish to do. But seriously, the success of our craft brewers, some of which have grown to, be, to, to garner international fame, like Brewdog, uh, the success of new distilleries throughout the country, supported by our enterprise network, I'm pleased to say, with a bit of uh, encouragement from people such as myself, have been, I think, part of the, war of the uh, framework which has allowed us to see Scotland's food and drink industry go from strength to strength. My job is to carry on that work. I pledge to do so with people across the chamber. Uh, I value the support. I appreciate that it's particularly that it, it does not seem to have been infected by the virus of party politics. Perhaps I could close with the thought that of all the things that seem to unify us and dispel the, the somewhat partisan nature of our proceedings, there can't be anything that does so with greater effect than food and drink. I finally pay tribute to all the people from Angus this evening that have achieved so much from that county and so much for their country. I was so busy thinking about what's going on at the Angus event that I forgot to turn my microphone on. <laughs> I now close this meeting.